Now let's say if we want to find the length of an arc. Starting from point A to point B. What equation can we use to do so? Perhaps you've seen this equation in your textbook. The arc length from A to B is the integration from those two points of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared times dx. Now in some textbooks you might see s instead of l and there's another variant of this equation which basically means the same thing. So instead of f prime of x you might see it written as dy over dx, which basically means the same thing. And let's not forget to square it. So that's the formula that we need to calculate the arc length. That is the length of this uh, curve from A to B. So now let's work on an example. So let's say that f of x is 1 plus 6 times x raised to the 3 over 2 power. And we want to find the length of the arc from 0 to 1. So you can also write it like this. Feel free to pause the video and try this example. Clearly we can see that a is 0, b is 1. Now the first thing that I will do is find the first derivative. So let's find f prime of x. The first derivative of 1, which is a constant, is 0. And to differentiate this, let's use the power rule. Let's rewrite the constant in front of it, which is 6. Take the exponent, move it to the front. So we're going to multiply 6 by 3 over 2. And then subtract the exponent by 1. 6 times 3, that's 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 3 over 2 minus 1, that's 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2, and that's 1 half. So the first derivative is equal to 9x to the half, which is the same as 9 square root x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to square the first derivative. nine squared is 81. The square root of x times the square root of x is simply x. So now let's use the formula. So in this problem we can see that a is equal to zero, b is one, and let's replace f prime of x squared with 81x. So this is 1 plus 81x dx. Now let's use u substitution. Let's make u equal to what's on the inside of the square root, 1 plus 81x. Therefore du is going to be 81dx. And if we solve for dx, it's du divided by 81. Now we need to change our a and b values using uh, this formula. So if we plug in 0, this is going to be uh, 1 plus 81 times 0, which is just 1. And if we plug in 1, that's 1 plus 81 times 1, which is uh, 82. So those are the uh, new limits of the integration. And then this is going to be the square root of u. And let's replace dx with du divided by 81. So now let's move the constant to the front. That is the 81. So we're going to have 1 over 81. Integration from 1 to 82. And then square root u is basically u to the 1 half. Now let's integrate it. 
if we add 1 to 1 half, that's going to be 3 over 2. Now, instead of dividing by 3 over 2, we're going to multiply by 2 over 3. And then we have a 1 over 81 in front. So 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 81, that's uh, 243. And let's plug in 82 first. So we're going to have 82 to the 3 halves. And then we'll plug in 1 minus 1 to the 3 halves. So what is 81, I mean 82 to the 3 halves? What is that equal to? This is basically 82 to the first power times 82 to the 1 half. Because 1 plus 1 half is the same as 3 over 2. 82 to the first power is just 82. And 82 to the 1 half is the square root of 82. So the final answer is 2 over 243. And we can make this. 82 times root 82, and 1 raised to the anything is just 1. Now, if you want to, you can convert this answer into its decimal equivalent. And if you do that, it's going to be about 6.103, approximately. So that's the answer for this problem. But now, let's move on to the next example. So let's say that y is equal to 3 over 2 x raised to the 2 or 3, and the intervals from 1 to 8. Go ahead and find the length of the arc of this curve from 1 to 8. So y is the same as f of x. So now we could find y prime, or f prime, which is the same as dy dx. So it's going to be 3 over 2, and then let's take the exponent and move it to the front. So times 2 over 3 and then x to the 2 thirds minus 1. So we can cancel the 2 and the 3's. 2 third minus 1, that's 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3, that's negative 1 over 3. So dy dx is x raised to negative 1 third. So using the formula, arc length is equal to the integration from a to b square root 1 plus dy over dx squared times dx. We can see that uh, a is 1, b is 8. So the arc length is going to be the integration from 1 to 8 square root 1 plus x to the negative 1 third squared times dx. So now let's go ahead and square x to the negative one third. Whenever you raise one exponent to another power, you need to multiply the two exponents. Negative one third times two is negative two thirds. So right now we have this expression. So how can we integrate this function? At the present, we can't use u substitution yet. We need to modify this expression. The best thing we can do is factor out x to negative 2 thirds. It's going to be the GCF. If we take out x to negative 2 thirds, what is going to go inside the brackets? To find out what goes inside, divide. 1 divided by x to the negative 2 thirds, let me just write it on the side, that's equal to x to the positive 2 thirds. So that's going to be the first term that goes inside x to negative 2 thirds divided by itself, it's going to be 1. So that's the second term. And if you distribute, you can see it's going to be the same. If you multiply these two, negative 2 thirds plus 2 thirds adds up to 0. x to the 0 is simply 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. And then x to negative 2 thirds times 1 will give you this value. So now what I'm going to do is separate it into two square root functions. 
So square root x to the negative 2 thirds times the square root of 1 plus x to the positive 2 over 3. Now let's say if you're a square root in the function. To simplify it, you're dividing the exponents. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the square root of x to 6 is x cubed. The square root of x to the negative 2 thirds, you divide negative 2 thirds by the index number 2, so that's going to be negative 1 third. So this is what we currently have. Now we can use u substitution. So let's make u equal to what's inside of the square root. That is 1 plus x raised to 2 thirds. So du is going to be 2 over 3 x 2 thirds minus 1. That's 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3. That's negative 1 over 3. So this is x to negative 1 third dx. Now let's solve for dx. So let's begin by multiplying both sides by 3. So 3 du is equal to 2x to the negative 1 third dx. Next, divide by 2x to the negative 1 third. So dx is equal to 3 du divided by this stuff. So now we're going to replace dx with this. So this is going to be, oh, we need to change the limits of integration as well. So let's plug in 1 and 8 into that equation. So 1 plus 1 to the 2 thirds is simply equal to 2. 1 plus 8 to the 2 thirds. What is that equal to? 8 to the 2 thirds is basically the cube root of 8 squared. The cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So this is 1 plus 4, which is 5. So the new limits of integration is from 2 to 5. And then it's going to be x to the negative 1 third times the square root of u. And dx is going to be 3 du divided by 2x to the negative 1 third. So we can cancel these two. And we can move 3 over 2 to the front. So what we're now going to have is 2 over 3 integration from 2 to 5 square root u du. The square root of u is basically u to the 1 half. And so this is what we now have. Now let's find the antiderivative of u to the 1 half. That's going to be 1 half plus 1, which is 3 over 2. And then multiply that by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 3. And actually, I think this is supposed to be 3 over 2. I wrote it as 2 over 3, but it shouldn't be that way. It was supposed to be 3 over 2. Let's fix that. So the 3's will cancel, and the 2's will cancel. So now we can plug in 5 and 2. So it's going to be 5 to the 3 halves minus 2 to the 3 halves. 5 to the 3 halves is basically 5 to the first power times 5 to the half. And the same is true for 2. So the answer is 5 square root 5 minus 2 square root 2, which that's equal to about 8.352. And so that's the answer. So what about this example? Let's say that x is equal to 1 over 3 times y squared plus 2 raised to the 3 over 2. And let's say that y is between 0 and 4. So what formula should we use if we have the function in terms of y? That is, we have x in terms of y. So let's say if the curve transverses the uh, y-axis. This is c, that's d. So in this problem, c is 0, d is 4. 
and we want to find the arc length between those two points. The equation that we need is L is equal to the integration from C to D, square root 1 plus, in this case we're going to use G prime of Y, squared dy. Now keep in mind g prime of y is equivalent to dx over dy. So you can put dx over dy squared if you want to. So let's go ahead and use this formula. Let's begin by finding dx divided by dy. So it's going to be 1 over 3 and then let's take this exponent and move it to the front. So times 3 over 2 now, the stuff that's inside the parentheses, we're going to keep it exactly the same for now. And then subtract this exponent by 1. 3 over 2 minus 1, that's 1 over 2. Next, according to the chain rule, we need to differentiate the inside part of this function. The derivative of y squared plus 2 is 2y. And so at this point, we can cancel a 3 and we can cancel a 2. So dx divided by dy is equal to y times y squared plus 2 raised to the 1 half is the same as the square root of y squared plus 2. So now let's go ahead and square this expression. So if we square both sides y to the first power raised to the second power becomes y squared. And the square root and a the square, they will cancel, giving us just y squared plus 2. So now let's distribute y squared to y squared plus 2. So this is going to be y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. And then y squared times 2 is 2y squared. So using this part of the formula, we're going to get the integration from c is 0, d is 4, and then it's going to be the square root of 1 plus y to the 4th plus 2y squared. So all we need to do is replace dx over dy squared with this which is what we did here. So now let's rewrite it like this. Let's put it in uh, standard form. Notice that this is a perfect square trinomial. If you have a trinomial in the form of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, you can factor it as uh, a plus b squared. So y to the fourth is the same as a squared. Therefore, a is basically y squared. b squared is 1, so b is 1. So let's take these values and plug it into this formula. So it's going to be y squared plus 1 squared. So what we have is this expression, the integration from 0 to 4, square root, y squared plus 1, squared, dy. This is not supposed to be dx, it's supposed to be dy. The square root of y squared plus 1 squared is just going to be y squared plus 1. The square root and the square will cancel. And so now we can integrate this expression. So it's going to be y to the third power divided by 3 plus y evaluated from 0 to 4. So let's plug in 4 first. So it's going to be 4 to the third divided by 3 plus 4. And then if we plug in 0, 0 cubed plus 0 is just 0. Now 4 to the third is 64. That's 4 times 4 times 4, 3 times. And we have 4 which I'm going to write as 4 over 1. Now, what we need to do is get common denominators. 4 times 3 is 12. So we have 64 over 3 plus 12 over 3. 
and 64 plus 12 is 76. So this is the final answer. It's 76 divided by 3. Now this is going to be the last example of this video. Let's say that x is equal to 1 third square root y times y minus 3. And y is going to be anywhere between 1 to 9. Go ahead and try this problem. Find the arc length from 1 to 9 relative to the y-axis. So what's the first thing that you think we should do in this problem? Well first, let's rewrite square root y as y to the 1 half. Next, let's distribute uh, y to the 1 half. So if we take this term, multiply it by y, we need to add the exponents, 1 half plus 1, which is going to be 1.5 or 3 over 2. So we have 1 third y raised to the 3 over 2 power, and then 1 third y to the half times negative 3. We can see that the 3's will cancel, and so we're just going to get negative y to the half. Now by this point, what we want to do is we want to find the first derivative. We need to find dx dy. So let's start with the first term. We're going to take this, move it to the front. So we're going to have uh, 1 over 3 times 3 over 2, and then subtract 3 over 2 by 1. 1. 1.5 minus 1 is a half. Now let's use the power rule on y to the half. Let's move this to the front. So it's going to be uh, minus 1 half y, and then subtract the exponent by 1. So it's negative a half. We can cancel the 3. And so dx over dy is 1 half y to the 1 half minus 1 half y to the negative 1 half. So what do you think we should do at this point? We need to find the square of dx over dy. But you don't want to take the square right now because you're going to have to FOIL. And let's avoid doing that. So let's uh, rearrange this expression. Let's factor out the GCF. Let's take out 1 half y to the negative 1 half. If we do that, if we divide this by this, it's just going to be y to the first power. If you want to see that, here it is. 1 half y to the 1 half divided by 1 half y to the negative 1 half. These two cancel. And when you divide by a common base, you need to subtract the exponents. 1 half minus negative 1 half is the same as a half plus a half, which is a whole. So we just get y to the first power. And the next one, if you divide this by that, you can clearly see that it's going to be negative 1. So now what we want to do is we want to square both sides. We need to find the square of the derivative. So dx over dy squared is now equal to a half squared. That's 1 half times 1 half. That's 1 fourth. And then if we multiply negative 1 half by 2, that's going to become y to the negative 1. And then y minus 1 to the first power, we just got to multiply the exponent by 2. So it's y minus 1 to the second power. So now at this point, we want to use the arc length formula. So it's the integration from a to b, actually rather, c to d, since we're dealing with y values square root 1 plus dx over dy squared times dy. So in this problem, c is 1, d is 9. And then we have the square root of 1 plus 1 fourth y to the negative 1 power 
and then times y minus 1 squared dy. So how can we integrate that expression? What would you do? What I would do is I would factor this term. I would have to take it out. So let's take out 1 fourth y to the negative 1. That's going to be the GCF. So 1 fourth y to the negative 1 divided by, actually rather, it's 1 divided by this term. That's going to be 4 times y. If you do 1 divided by 1 fourth y to the negative 1, this is the same as 1 over 1 fourth times 1 over y. You got to multiply the top and bottom by 4y. So these two will cancel. Those two will cancel, and you just get 4y on top. This is going to be a long problem. Now, if we take this term divided by 1 fourth y to negative 1, these two will cancel, and we're just going to get plus y minus 1 squared dy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to FOIL y minus 1 squared. This is basically y minus 1 times y minus 1. And so when you FOIL it, you're going to get y squared minus 2y plus 1. If you do y times y, y times negative 1, negative 1 times y, negative 1 times negative 1, it's going to work out to this. So now let's replace y minus 1 squared with this expression. So we have 4y plus y squared minus 2y plus 1. So now let's combine like terms. 4y and negative 2y, that's positive 2y. So notice at this point we have a perfect square trinomial. y squared plus 2y plus 1. So now that this term is multiplied to this term, we can separate it into two radicals if we want to. And we can also factor this term. We know it's going to be y plus 1 squared. The square root of 1 fourth the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of y to negative 1, you just got to divide negative 1 by 2, so it's y to negative 1 half. And the square root of this term is simply y plus 1 to the first power. So now, we can distribute y to the negative 1 half. I'm going to take this constant and move it to the front. So we have 1 half, integration 1 to 9. If we multiply these two, negative half plus 1, that's uh, positive 1 half. And then this is going to be plus y to the negative 1 half. So now let's integrate. 1 half plus 1, that's going to be 3 over 2, and then times 2 over 3. And then negative a half plus 1, that's 1 half. Instead of dividing by 1 half, we're going to multiply by 2 over 1. So now, let's distribute the 1 half. 1 half times 2 thirds, the 2's will cancel. So it's going to be 1 third y to the 3 half. And 1 half times 2 is just 1, so this is going to be plus y to the half evaluated from 1 to 9. Now let's plug in 9. So 1 third times 9 raised to the 3 over 2 plus 9 times or 9 raised to the 1 half. And now let's plug in 1. So 1 third times 1 to the 3 halves plus 1 to the 3 halves. So what's 9 to the 3 halves? This is going to be the square root of 9 
raised to the third power. The square root of 9 is 3, and 3 to the third power is 27. So we have 1 third times 27, plus the square root of 9, which is 3, and then minus 1 to the 3 half is just 1. This is supposed to be 1 half, by the way. So this is just going to be 1 third plus 1. 27 divided by 3 is 9, and then let's distribute the negative sign. 9 plus 3 is 12. And 12 minus 1 is 11, so we have 11 minus 1 third. So now let's get common denominators. Let's multiply this one by 3 over 3. So this is going to be 33 over 3 minus 1 over 3. So the final answer is 32 over 3. And that's it for this problem.